Today, we're learning English with legendary British sitcom, The Inbetweeners. Carly! Cats! I'm sorry. The Inbetweeners is a smash hit comedy about four teenagers living in suburban England. The series follows them through sixth form and documents their, um, how do I say, uh, misadventures. It is hilarious, incredibly rude, and a fantastic insight into what it's like to be a youngster in Britain. Now you can watch full episodes of all three series on channel four Amazon Prime and on YouTube. Today we're going to look at an episode from series one and I'm going to take clips and teach you some fantastic British English. I can't wait to do this guys, let's get going. And so, in what I can only describe as an attack of frisbee rage, once again, we found ourselves running from Donovan. All right. Not really. Oh, what's up? Well, think back, Neil. Uh, last time you saw us, before you legged it, a frisbee was heading towards a disabled girl's face. Oh, uh, did it hit her in the face then? Bingo. Straight away, we've got two fantastic phrases there. So Will says to Neil, uh, before you legged it. Now, to leg it, means to run away very quickly. So you run away from something. So in this case, uh, they ran away from a group of boys that were trying to chase them. So you run away very quickly, you leg it. He also says bingo. So Neil says, uh, oh, so the frisbee hit the girl's face. And Will says bingo. He's using bingo in that sense to say that you guessed correctly. So someone says something, they make an assumption or they guess something, they get it correct, you say, yeah, bingo. Like, yes, you're correct. So for example, I might say to you, uh, try and guess my favorite city in the world. And you say, oh, it's, uh, it's London. I'm like, yeah, bingo, bingo. Like, yes, you are correct. So let's look at that clip again and you can hear that vocabulary one more time. All right. Not really. Oh, what's up? Well, think back, Neil. Uh, last time you saw us, before you legged it, a frisbee was heading towards a disabled girl's face. Oh, did it hit her in the face then? Bingo! Well, that's it. We can't bunk off tomorrow now. Oh, why? Well, oh, because it's bad karma, isn't it? Neil then says the word bunk off. We can't bunk off now. So this means to skip school without permission. So you don't go to school, uh, but you're not allowed to do it, okay? It's, uh, it's against the rules. So you bunk off school. Uh, it's a bit like to play truant. That's another way to say it. Like I'm gonna play truant tomorrow means that I'm not gonna go to school and to bunk off school is the same thing. Again, perfect British slang. Well, that's it. We can't bunk off tomorrow now. Oh, why? Well, oh, cause it's bad karma, isn't it? Simon! Yes. All right, Will, come in. Why aren't you in uniform? We're very sorry, Mrs. Cooper. It was Jay's idea. Yeah, we're really sorry. We forgot to tell you it was a non-uniform day. No, it's not. Bye. Yes, it is. For years 12 and 13. It is, you little Right, so it's a year 12 non-uniform day. This phrase, non-uniform day, is exactly what it sounds like. A day at school where you don't have to wear your uniform. Now, we have another word for this. We used to use this at my school called a mufty day. Mufty day, it's the same thing. It's a day when you don't have to wear a uniform. So a non-uniform day or mufty day. Right, so it's a year 12 non-uniform day. Who are you calling? School? I'll just say we're in and won't be in today. <laughs> no, really, who are you calling? Don't shit your pants, I'm only phoning the school secretary, not f***ing the MI5. Oh, hello there, this is Mrs. Cooper, Simon's mother, year 12. Simon and his friend William McKenzie have come down with food poisoning. Must have been from the chicken. Simon here is calling the sick form, pretending to be his mum. And he says we've come down with food poisoning. If you come down with something, you become ill with something. So it's not usually a serious thing, it's like a cold, a flu, food poisoning, something like that. So yeah, here he says they've cut, the boys have come down with food poisoning. But yeah, it could be like, oh, I've come down with a bit of a cold, whatever it is. So suddenly you have this illness. Simon and his friend Winnie McKenzie have come down with food poisoning. Must have been from the chicken. That was dreadful. I think he bought it though. In what way did he buy it? 
I think he thought that was my mum. Then at the end of the conversation, he says, I think they bought it. So this is the verb to buy, not in the sense that we normally think of, like when you buy something from a supermarket. To buy in this context is to believe someone's story. So he is saying that he's told a story to the, to the school and they have believed him. They believe that what he said was true. So they've bought it. I think he bought it though. In what way did he buy it? What, what are you wearing? The suit's my dad's. He insisted. The hat's his though. What a bell end. Okay, this is a nice bit of very rude British slang. Warning, there is some rude language. So bellend is an insult to someone, just like saying idiot, but it's ruder and it basically means like uh, penis. So yeah, you have to be careful with this one. Don't go around <laughs> saying it. It's one of those words that you're gonna hear. If you come to Britain, you're gonna see it on TV, people saying it to each other. Ah, oh, you bellend, like you're an idiot. But yeah, a bit more rude, so yeah. Be careful, don't use it in formal situations, that's for sure. What, what are you wearing? The suit's my dad's, he insisted. The hat's his though. What a bell end. I think this is why the in-betweeners is so good because it gives you that real natural British English. I've definitely learned a few words from this programme and I'm sure you can too. The key is to let the shop owner know who's in control. It's like a Jedi mind trick. I am an adult, you will serve me. Jedi mind trick. This is of course a reference to Star Wars and the ability to persuade someone to do something that they wouldn't ordinarily do. That against, it's against their characteristics. So in this case, Will is trying to buy alcohol. He's underage, so it's illegal, and he's trying to persuade the shop owner to uh, allow him the, to buy the alcohol. So he's gonna use a Jedi mind trick, like a mental persuasion um, to do it. So yeah, this is a phrase that we have taken from Star Wars and we use in everyday life. So if you're trying to persuade someone to do something uh, that's usually against their normal behavior, then you might use a Jedi mind trick. Hmm. The key is to let the shop owner know who's in control. It's like a Jedi mind trick. I am a man who has recently bought a house in the local area and I'm having a housewarming party to which I'll be inviting a lot of the local adults. Now his excuse for buying this alcohol is that he's having a housewarming party. This is a party that is thrown when you, when you move into a new place. So it could be a housewarming or a flat warming. So when you move into a new place, then you, you celebrate this, this event by having a party. This is a housewarming party. Party. I am a man who has recently bought a house in the local area and I'm having a, a housewarming party to which I'll be inviting a lot of the local adults to, uh, hence the crisps. I like this word here, he says hence the crisps. Hence is a slightly formal uh, word to give an explanation for something. So uh, he's saying we're having a party hence the crisps, like therefore we are having crisps. Um, I might say, for example, uh, you know, we've had lockdown and there are no hairdressers open, hence the bad hair, right? So the reason for the big bad hair that I've got is the lockdown, the fact that hairdressers are closed. He's used it here to sound more formal, to sound more adult because he's a kid trying to buy alcohol in a shop. And I'm having a, a housewarming party to which I'll be inviting a lot of the local adults to, uh, hence the crisps. You look well. Thanks. How's your mum? Not happy, but fit. That's a very simple word here, fit. Fit in this example means good looking or attractive. It's a slang word for good looking. It could be any gender, so anyone could be fit. So, ah, oh, he's really fit. He's really good looking. You look well. Thanks. How's your mum? Not happy, but fit. Okay guys, in the comments below, I'd like you to take one phrase that you've just learnt and use it in a practice sentence, all right? And I'll come down and check that it is correct. Also, I would like you to suggest any other British TV shows that you'd like me to look at in terms of learning English, all right? The Inbetweeners is a fantastic show. I really recommend you go check it out on Channel 4, YouTube, or Amazon Prime, and get ready for some very rude language. It's so good. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys. This is Tom, the Chief Dreamer, saying goodbye.